Okay, so we've done uh, a few examples with uh, the first and the second derivative tests. Uh, now we should talk about uh, which one of these should we use. So before we begin anything, um, you know, if you're doing a quiz or a test or a homework assignment, uh, of course what you want to do is whatever the instructions say. Uh, so if the instructions say use the first derivative test, then go ahead and do that. If they say use the second derivative test, uh, of course you'll want to do that. But if it's up to you, um, then you know, one of these might be better than the other. And unfortunately, it's not really easy to tell which one's better uh, until you kind of start working through the problem. But uh, let's sort of talk about, you know, let, let's just compare the two and see um, just generally uh, what's going on here. So what's nice about the first derivative test uh, is it always works, right? But if we compare that to the second derivative test, uh, remember the second derivative test had that inconclusive case um, where if we ended up with the second derivative being zero, uh, then there could either be a min, uh, a max, or neither at that point x equals c, right? But uh, the first derivative test doesn't have any inconclusive case like that. So that's a huge advantage for the first derivative test. Um, and also, for the first derivative test, all you need is the first derivative, right? Um, but for the second derivative test, you need f primed and f double primed. You have to have the first two derivatives. Uh, most of the time, getting the second derivative isn't really too bad, but it is an extra step of work. So it's kind of an advantage for the first derivative test, again. Um, but, you know, for the most part, uh, getting the second derivative won't really be too bad, but it is uh, an extra step there. But uh, also, you know, when you get the first derivative for both of these, you, you do use the first derivative to find critical points. Uh, so you do have to simplify the first derivative, uh, set it equal to zero, solve for x, and all that stuff. But uh, for this, when you find the second derivative, you don't really have to simplify it. So you could have like a nasty quotient rule thing going on. Um, but that's okay because you really don't have to simplify it because all you need the second derivative for uh, is just to you know, evaluate it at the critical points. Um, and you don't really have to simplify it to do that because you don't really care what the values are. You just care are, they, uh, are the values positive, negative, or zero, right? Um, so yeah, you do have this extra step of getting the second derivative, but most of the time it's not that bad and you don't have to simplify it. Uh, so still though, just a slight advantage maybe for the first derivative test. Um, okay, so another comparison here is for the first derivative test, we have to uh, evaluate, let's zoom in just a bit, we have to evaluate the first derivative uh, at points that we choose in those intervals. So if you remember back to those examples we did, uh, we set up a little sign chart and we divided up the real line in intervals. Uh, we had to choose a point in each interval and evaluate the uh, derivative at those points that we chose. Uh, sometimes that could be a messy calculation. Um, you know, if your intervals aren't too nice, then it's going to be hard to pick a decent point inside of the intervals. Um, but you know, most of the time it's okay, but still it could be pretty messy. Uh, but again, you know, you don't really have to simplify the answers. You just have to know, um, you know, when you evaluate f prime, you don't really have to simplify. You just have to know is the value I get positive, negative, uh, and so on. So it should either be positive or negative. If you evaluate f prime and you get zero, then something went wrong. But that's sort of off topic for this video. Um, but anyway, you just you have to evaluate f prime at points you choose in the intervals, and it could be kind of messy. Uh, but for the second derivative test, you evaluate f double prime at critical points, um, which generally is a little bit nicer. Uh, you know, finding the second derivative, like we talked about uh, a few minutes ago, might uh, you know it's an extra step, but it's usually not that bad. But it, it could be kind of messy sometimes. But still, uh, you don't have to simplify the second derivative. And uh, again, just like here. You don't have to simplify the answer you get. You just want to know, is it positive, is it negative, or uh, is it zero? Uh, and also, what's nice about this is, um, you know, here, evaluate the second derivative at critical points. Here, evaluate the first derivative at points you choose in the intervals. Uh, usually, you're going to end up evaluating at more points than you would evaluate over here. So, for example, uh, if you have three critical points, uh, so let's just draw a little number line real quick. If you have three critical points, say here's one, here's two, here's three, uh, then that divides the line into four intervals, right? So one interval here, one interval, one interval, one interval. So there's four intervals, and you have to choose in, uh, a number from each interval to evaluate the first derivative at, right? So you have four points to evaluate f prime at. But um, the second derivative, you only have to evaluate at the critical points. So if you just have three critical points, uh, you know, these three critical points here, that's only three places to evaluate the second derivative at. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, even though you have this extra step of calculating the second derivative, um, you have less points to evaluate it at, okay? Generally speaking. Uh, that might not always be the case if something weird is going on with the domain or, you know, if you're doing an application where the domain is restricted. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, you'll have less points to evaluate the second derivative at uh, than you will, you know, points and intervals to evaluate the first derivative. So it's a slight advantage.
uh, for the second derivative here. Okay. Um, and then lastly, uh, what's nice about the first derivative test is uh, it works for all critical points. Okay. So any critical point that you get where the derivative is zero or where it's undefined, this first derivative test works. Uh, but what's bad about the second derivative test is it only works for critical point C where f prime to C and f double prime to C both exist. So remember from the uh, second derivative test introduction video um, and all the examples we did, we had that restriction where the first and second derivative both uh, must exist at this critical point C. So uh, that could be a pretty big restriction depending on what you're doing. Um, but also for a lot of applications that you'll do, it really won't be that bad. But just because this restriction is here, uh, and the first derivative test doesn't have any such restriction, um, it's a pretty big advantage for the first derivative test. So, um, you know, so let's recap real quick, what do we have? Uh, this was an advantage for the first derivative test, advantage for the first derivative test, uh, kind of, just a slight advantage, and this is a slight advantage for the second derivative test, and this is a fairly big advantage for the first derivative test, depending on the application. So, really, it looks like the first derivative test is quite a bit better. Um, I mean, we don't really want to jump to that conclusion right away. You know, there are other things to consider. Uh, this is just sort of a little overview of some of the things to think about uh, when deciding between first and second derivative test. Uh, if you're doing a problem and you're allowed to use either test, you're not really sure, uh, you know, just jump into it anyway. The first two steps are pretty much the same. Find the domain of the function, find all the critical points of the function. So you're going to end up taking a first derivative anyway and setting it equal to zero, uh, solving for x and all that good stuff. So if it looks like the second derivative is going to be complicated uh, to find, then you know just go ahead and try the first derivative test. You know uh, the first derivative test is always going to work anyway, so it might just be safe to go that route. But if you uh, if the critical points are kind of ugly, um, and it's going to be kind of messy to divide the uh, number line up in intervals, then second derivative test might be the way to go. Because even if the critical points are ugly, uh, evaluating the second derivative at the critical points might not be that bad. Okay. So I think uh, we had an example a couple of videos ago where we had a critical point that was something like 4e to the negative 1 half, which is kind of a goofy critical point. Um, but when we evaluated f double primed at that point, uh, it really wasn't that bad, right? It simplified kind of nicely. So stuff like that could happen. So uh, anyway, you know, with these uh, major advantages for the first derivative test, you might be wondering, why do we even have a second derivative test? Well, just a little side topic. Um, if you go on farther in math, uh, a few semesters past calculus, if you take a, an advanced analysis course, something like that, um, you'll see that the second derivative test in calculus is actually uh, a special case of something much more general, which is pretty fascinating. But anyway, that's just sort of where the second derivative test comes from. But that's a topic for a much later video. Uh, anyway, this is just a quick overview of first and second derivative tests, which one should we use? Really, if you have a choice, it's pretty much up to you. First derivative test might be a good one to use. Um, but, you know, if the second derivative test is better, uh, sometimes it really could be much better. Okay? But, it, again, it's hard to tell until you jump into it. Uh, but anyway, if you have a choice, uh, just try the first derivative test. If you don't like it, try the second derivative test. Uh, and if the second derivative test won't work for you, you know, uh, if you have that inconclusive case, or if you're stuck with critical points where you can't use the second derivative test, uh, then you'll have to go back to the first derivative test anyway. So, uh, brief overview there.